Hello and welcome to this week's Aaron and Zach semi lame video review show. I'm here with my friend Aaron Cavagnolo. Good to see you, Aaron. I thought the new title of the show is Aaron and Zach the Gurus um, no. Whitewater Rafting Show. Like that's the, that's your new that's your nickname I've heard now or whatever. You're now considered like the rafting guru. So, well, Aaron, before the show, I told you one person said that. So that doesn't mean we're gurus. That certainly doesn't mean you're a guru. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. definitely not a guru. I'm not claiming any of it. It's like Aaron and Zach quote the guru. No, yeah. we're semi lame. It's our semi lame rafting show. That's what it is. Until okay. we come up with a better name, or until actually we're doing pretty good. You're on time, Aaron. You're not eating a sandwich. You, and you might still mess teeth? it up. Yep, you yeah. brush your teeth. So I don't know. We might move ourselves up again. And you've got good internet connection today, like much better yeah. than when you're in Oregon. So that's yeah, a, that's which is surprising plus. because it's it's been sketchy uh, the whole time I've been here. So it's just happening to work really well right now. So uh, this is a weekly show Aaron and I do on Fridays at 2 p.m. where we just talk about rafting. We review some videos. Uh, if you like the show, awesome. Thank you. If you don't, we apologize for wasting your time. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe. Have fun. Comment. We love the comments because it gives us something to just feed off. Like if there's no comments, we're just going to talk amongst ourselves and be super boring. It's the comments that really, really make the show. So let's just get into it, Aaron. I, this, this week... Uh, multiple people sent me this this Instagram post of a video on the Ocoee River. Or the Ocoee is our new favorite river, I think, because so much cool stuff happens. Oh my People god! Pulling right. off a wrap, dude. How many? And matching shirt day. That's right, Blue Puma. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Aaron made fun of me before the show about my shirt. Maybe it was because he knew we were wearing matching shirts. Um. So this is on the old Ocoee. Recognize that Forest Service sign on the bridge probably that same place and a boat wrapped and this is them pulling it off i haven't watched it yet i've watched like a, a few seconds of it so excuse me i'm excited to see what uh what we have in, in store you ready for this aaron have you seen this yeah, aaron? Let's do it. no i have not watched this one all right so pretty bad wrap i don't know if you can see that yeah. very well and Whoa. do they all just fall over can we watch that again? Yeah, they all just fell over. <laughs> so they're pulling and pulling. I think they broke the D ring or something. Yeah, I mean, look how many people they're pulling on. That's amazing. I mean, that's, so pulling. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that's one thing about mechanical advantage is like, do you really need a mechanical advantage in some ways that you can get that many people on a rope? But you know, what do we say? Like three people max on a mechanical advantage they usually say so that's like hold on wait, wait, so let's get let's get back no i think that's wrong okay. hold on let's get back to this is this i think this is i thought this was like a five minute video this is literally just one video i just i'm just realizing that but i'm getting stuck okay oh, so it's falling? Just repeating over and over okay i got it. got it well there's a lot of good comments if you read the comments and about you know how many people should be polling what the maximum polling is you were saying three people on a three to one. Uh, I really like what I call the rule of 12, which is you never have more than 12 person power. So on a three to one, that'd it's be four. four people. Okay. Um, and so on a five to one, it's two. And you only have 10 power of 10. Like, so really, or a two to one, you have six, right? Or doing 12 people at once. But there's a lot of comments about how many people is too many people and i mean in some ways this is safer than a three to one right <laughs> look at they all eat it um i guess people could fall down yeah it is but it, yeah i mean it's kind of interesting it's interesting it's like yeah i don't know yeah i'm not sure how i feel about that i remember remember when you wrapped on Fowler's Rock, we did. We pretty much did this. We had a ton of people. Remember that? It was a bucket boat back in like 1996. Yeah. I want to say. No, I can't. There was no mechanical advantage on that one. Yeah, we didn't do any mechanical advantage on that wrap. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we had, but we had a ton of people pulling on it. So I think yeah. oh, this is interesting. Lots of comments. Maybe this should def deflate a tube. Aaron, I mean, is that really a tube deflate? It's almost underwater. Yeah, you can tube deflate that for sure. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, your, that's always your answer. I, I would tube but deploy. It, it's hard to see from that angle, but one side of there, if it looks like it's going going to go off more to river left, then I def deflate the river right side top tube. If it has the quadrant tubes, if it has the SOTAR style, that's harder. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think I would. Uh, I'd go for tube deflation here. Why not? If it's out, if it's a tube that's out of water, how is that hurting you? It's annoying to pump up afterwards. Yes. Yeah. And once you deflate, you can't reflate. You can't like take that back. It's a one-way ticket. Yeah, but if what it's if out it of the water, it doesn't matter. Maybe it might matter sometime. The general, so, the rigidity of boat, I think, holds the boat down. So softening it makes it better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know you're right. I'm, I'm with yeah. you. Well, I'm okay. afraid of tube deflation because I'm just afraid. I, of, I, I'm, I'm afraid gonna say, I, I'm gonna say, yeah, that's a lot of people, and I bet they start putting more and more people on it, but. I don't think they went around the tube either. I think if they got around the tube, that would have been interesting to see what happens. Or to, I mean, it's probably only one D ring, right? They probably, oh, yeah, totally. my my guess, just my guess, knowing what I've seen on the Ekoe so far, and this is not a diss on the Ekoe necessarily, but if this is a throwback clipped onto a D ring. You think that's that's gotta be a that's gotta be a long line, isn't it? I mean, a throw, that's a long throwback. Look at look how far reading, back it goes. That's a that's I mean, a really comments. Is it a throwback? And I think somebody somebody commented it was a throwback, and I think the way they because they felt like they're seeing stretch in the rope, like when the pull happens. Sorry, you can't. I can see it bigger than you can. So I'm looking at it on the screen, but it looks like the rope stretches. And so I, the question is: Is this a is this a rope breaking? Is this like a lightweight throwback breaking? Or is this a D ring pump? I'm gonna go with the D wing. Yeah, but, I'm gonna go with that too. Because ropes yeah, just I, don't. I mean, ropes even a th even a light throwback isn't, isn't gonna break. But with the rule of twelves, you know, I, I'd say like I would after twelve people, people are getting each other's way. There's always so many people that can pull at once, and that just starts like the 13th, 14th, 15th person isn't really helping that much. Well, and I think I think if you can't, if twelve people isn't enough, instead of throwing more people on there, maybe try a different angle. Yeah, yeah. I would say, yeah. And that's a good question. The next comment too, that's what I was wondering too, Rodney. Yeah, is like at this point, if you've got that many people, and it's not working. Maybe you need to try it from the other side, pull from, clip it onto a different spot, go around the tube in a different spot, deflate the tube. But I mean, it's a nasty wrap, and I'm sure they tried a lot of different stuff before they got to there. But, I mean, uh, that's that's an early assessment you make. Which way is it going to? Which way does it want to come off? You don't want to fight the way it wants to come off, yeah. right? It's they're never perfectly wrapped, so you, both ways work. There's typically one way that's better. The thing is, you have people and stuff on this side, and so to, to have the leadership ability to say, "Everybody, stop! I know we're here. Let's all walk across the bridge, you know, and do the other side." It's hard to do. You know, it sounds easy, but it's really hard to get everybody to switch sides. But then, I mean, yeah, Zach, I mean, all you need to take is like three or four people over there and just go set up a quick Z-drag, and then you don't have to get all those people over there. I mean, which is, there's advantages and disadvantages of that. So I I think it's an impressive throw to get to bag from that boat to shore. I'm looking at that and saying that's not an easy throw to make. Do you think it went boat to shore or shore to boat? Either way, either way, either way. That's a long throw. Yeah. I threw a throwback to a boat last the other day. Um, yeah. On the grass. Does it? What? Nick's saying it looks more comfortable to fall down on the grass on the other side. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's so easy for us to be armchair quarterbacks. I think the questions are does it make sense to have this many people pulling at once, or is this just insane? I don't know. But they all have helmets on, they all got their life jackets on, they're doing most of the things right. Yeah. That's a good point, Nick, about blocking the main run. But oh, then you don't okay. have everyone help stop to help you because you're blocking the run, so they all want to come down and <laughs> pull from that rope too. I mean, um, I think, that, but the ultimate question, you need to pull the way it's already coming off. Well, no matter what side that is, that's an early assessment. Like whatever way yeah. it's already towards go to that side. I, I remember, that, I don't know if you were there, we had a wrap on the Smith where Canada wrapped and Dan Martin was on the boat. And we spent an hour. It's just on our last day. It was on the Middle Smith, in that, right above Highway Rapid, and mm -hmm. we spent an hour and a half pulling from one side, trying to fight the way it wanted to come because we were there. That's where we edited out. And finally, we we're somebody was like, "Let's go the other side," and it was like, "That's a." Everybody's like, "No, we're already here. Let's just keep pulling." And we finally did that. It came out pretty quick. 
And so I, that was my big lesson personally. Well, I, I, and I think that goes back to the original thing is like, if you're pulling and it's not moving and you're not seeing results, adding more force is not the answer. I think a lot of people say, oh, just increase the force, increase the course. That's how you break stuff. Yeah. It's change the force. You're trying to change the, like that wrap is stuck there because if there's a balance of forces on it and you need to get rid of that balance of forces that's holding it there. And that shouldn't be a huge amount of force. And generally it should be a little bit here, a little bit there, try to pull a little bit more on this side. That's why I like the deflating the tubes is it, it changes the force and that everything has to be in equilibrium way for that boat to be staying there. And you deflate a tube, usually it's just gonna change the force on the boat. Yeah. But only the tubes that are out of the water. Yeah, it's just, I think for people who have never seen the wrap or been a part of the real one, once it happens, it's very intimidating and they just do the best they can. And I think what happens is people get a rope on it and then start pulling in incremental, more powerful fashions. Like there's not enough people like you who've seen a bunch of them. They can say, let's try this and this and this and that. They go right to firepower. And when the three to one doesn't work, they make it a nine to one. You know, when the nine one does, doesn't work, they do, you know, they keep going and going and going until something fails or the boat comes off. It looks like the way it is. It looks like the way it is. They have to pull in front of the bridge. Yeah, they pull from a different angle. Yeah. All right, Zach. This is uh, we've watched this a lot. There's not a lot more just. Um, oh, you're bored with this. Okay. All right. Yeah. Let's um, move on, man. Let's yeah. move on. Let's move on to something we got a little more to talk about. I will say. I mean, the one thing I'll go back to is like. When people fall, though, I've seen people get hurt falling like that, particularly over rocky terrain and stuff like that. It's kind of sketchy. So be careful. So we have a Blossom Bar run. So this is coming from Tyler Sammons, who is a fan of the show. And he posted this, and I, saw, I got, he tweeted it. I got a tweet, Aaron. There we go. Now it's full screen. And... It's his run of Blossom Bar. I just, right away, I'm noticing that's one of those WWTC throwbacks. Oh my God, he totally is, you are you are his guru, look at that. And I, you know, I saw a few in the middle fork this week too. Oh really? So I think more and more people are starting to use those throwbacks. We're just getting out, they're pretty sweet. And I mean, just looking at his rig too, like everything's tied on well, mm -hmm. right? Like he's got everything in its place, it's well tied in, there's not, flappy stuff around i'm gonna say I mean, this i i like i like his uh i like the gear tarps over than better than the gear nets you yeah know, like the, the keys got over the back i think it's a lot cleaner and it seems a lot safer a lot less entrapment concerns and they work really well i'm a fan of those yeah do you ever use them yeah we used to have them at oa back in the day you remember that we had mm -hmm. some back then no dennis had some made up yeah and they had like cam straps in the corners and they cam down you could just cam everything down underneath it. It was really nice. You just throw all the bags in, put the tarp over, and like cam it down the sides, and it's like nothing's going anywhere. So it's kind of, I mean, it's 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 a little more idiot proof in a way. Like you don't have to like rig through each bag. It takes less time, and it's it's pretty efficient. I've seen like OU down in Grand Canyon. They've got like bags that are similar, and they throw everything in the bag, and then they zip the bag closed and kind of strap the bag down a little bit. And it is nice. It just it simplifies the process. I just, I don't like it because I worry about what happens when the boat flips, right? Everything is going to get wet and it's going to really pull on it. And can that actually keep it in there if it flips? Why wouldn't it keep it in? I, what's your concern? I mean, the bags are closed. It'll just move. Like the, the bags are what? Oh, are you talking about the lid or the bag inside? The I feel like the lid is going to start getting loose and things might come out. So I, I think it's fine for, or if you wrap and just, you, you have to deflate tubes and all of a sudden there's space. And so I've never, I worry about those things when they, when they flip. We had one flip on the Illinois and everything stayed in pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. I had a little green wall. We had a flip there and it, I mean, actually I think it stays in better. And I think there's more problems with the, when people wrap webbing through stuff, the way they wrap it through a lot of times they don't do straight lines. And so when stuff gets wet, that webbing loosens up and then things want to straighten up. And then I've seen way more problems. And just looking at the way people rig a lot of times, I think the, I'm a bigger fan of the tarp. I think the, 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 the gear tarp scene, if you've got enough tie downs, like if you tie, like if it's tied right behind, you have to have enough really D rings. Well, 
Yeah, you have that, or well, you have deep range, or you have a perimeter line, and you go to that perimeter line. Really? Yeah. You tie that to a perimeter line. Yeah, yeah, just around the back. Yeah, and you just well, you tie to the D rings in between. You can tie to the perimeter line. So you go to the D rings, and in between, if oh. there's not enough, you go to that perimeter line that goes through the D rings, and then it's like separate, like separate little web, separate little cam straps on each, pretty much. So it's not like yeah, they, it's it's really secure, Zach. I you know for me, I'm a hater because it's not what I learned, and I hate change, right? Like if my mentors never said use this thing, they were just like tired things and like this. So. I'm a creature of habit and I, and you know, like we all, we all hate change. As soon as somebody says, Hey, try this out. You're like, no, no, no. This is the one way I've always done it. So, and it's, I, for me, it's one more thing you have to own. Well, I'm going to purpose. I'm going to say this, like I'm cheap. So I would never own one because they're, they're <laughs> expensive. Um, but I mean, they also protect your gear from UV. So it also protects your gear from UV, your bag, dry bags and stuff like that. So there's other advantages to it, but, uh, yeah, no, it is something else to own, and it takes, a, it takes a while to rig it. it. And you have to bring it, you have to put it on where cam straps or cam straps or just rope. Like I love rigging with rope or, or like, you know, half inch hoopy, right? But Zach, if, if, if I had a, it, if you had a tire boat and tie, when you're done, all those get used to tie onto your truck. And you know, there's just like cam straps or hoopy are multiple use where this is only for your sized boat to tie stuff in the back. Yep, totally true. And so, if the I mean, brain's in a different spot, it may not work just right. Yeah, no, no, you, you're yeah. right. So you're for me, right. like if I was a private boater and I had a garage where I store my boat and everything was beautiful and perfect, I would have one for sure, I think. Right? Like I always use my I have one boat, I dial it out to be perfect. Yeah, no brainer. But if I even have to roll my boat every trip, it's just one more thing for me to tie on every time I go. Uh, or for us commercially, you know, we're just moving things around, trying different things. You know, one use items aren't that, you know, the more utilitarian gear is the better for us commercially. Uh, all right, ready to see this footage? This is Blossom Bar. I'll tell you the thing I noticed right away. He has pretty close to the right length orders, maybe a tiny bit short. Oh, we got to go back to Nick's comments before before we run the over. Hold on, hold on. Yes, pause it. I'm not on that page. All right. So Nick's oh, actually claiming multi-use on the back. He's not talking about the tarp type. He's talking about the bag type where you clip it into the floor on the bottom and then it goes over the top. And he said he's had flips with them and it's worked well. Um, and then he also said that it's really nice going to and from putting is you can put all your light stuff in that bag and you don't have to worry about it blowing away. So it is multiple use act. Mm. Yeah, this guy Nick is on to something. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's good, good points. Yeah, it's good for rigging yeah, too. Nick, good point. Yeah. And, and let me tell you, I've I've seen enough stuff fly out of commercial vehicle, commercial rafting vehicles to know that that would be good. All the light stuff went in one of those bags and went on top. Probably lose less stuff. I'm sure it never happens yeah. on with Zach's crews, but no. other less professional. Now you said that probably will. Yeah, Aaron, yeah. we you know what we did now? Do you know those helmet bags I told you about that I got to put our helmets in the paddle boats? Yeah. We've been using them; they're awesome, and they just stay in the boats permanently. That's when great. Trips over, you just put all the helmets in there. They stay in there, and they go back to put. They go back to put in today, and they're just permanently in there with full of helmets. It's been awesome. Same thing; like it's a bag that can use to store stuff in between trips too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's. But that's so there's, idea. but there's two things. There's the bag with a zipper on top, and then there's the cover. Right? There's two different things we're talking about. Mm -hmm. I don't know which one this is. Right. So he's talking, talking about, about the bag. He's talking about the bag, and there's clips that go into the bottom to hold the bag in. You clip it towards the floor. Yeah, and, and there's a zipper. You just throw stuff in there. Yeah. Zip it, and your stuff's in there. So that's I've seen those zippers cool. jam up though, and I've had those zippers be annoying, like down in Arizona, where it's all sandy and gritty and yeah, stuff no, like that. I've had the zippers. Once those zippers don't work, you then have a problem. That's why I prefer the I prefer I prefer just the cam it close type of thing. You know, yeah. have a couple of cams. Or make sure they're good. They're big zippers. Yeah, exactly. All right. So, bat, oh, yeah. Person is looking good there. Yeah, the yellow. And then Stokey's wearing a helmet. You go, you go to the rope. You can't find people wearing a helmet in Blossom, and it's not many. So, nice job wearing a helmet. All right. So, what did he think he's running here? What type of wrap is this? It's like a 14. It's like an Air 130. So uh, I'm gonna guess Air One Thirty Double D. No, One Forty Double D. That's what I'm gonna guess. 
Yeah. Everybody knows. One, I'm saying 140 double D. One four, if there's no 136 double D in between 13. Okay, sounds good. So it's a 13 6 with uh, heavily diminishing tubes. And I'll say, I like his rig. His rig, everything's low. His weight's low. You know, like everything looks secure. Um, yeah, looking good. Okay, so right, so this right here. So his left, so this were the or length. This where or length is so big for me. He has interior length, like their interior good, but his hand to me right there seems a little higher. So that's where I'd want longer roars on the outside. So his hand's a little lower. Well, I'm going to say, yeah, Zach, I'm going to say this. I think those, those, uh, his locks are really wide on that frame. Like, I know you can't adjust that on that frame, but I think those locks are really wide. Yeah. Like, right. like, wider like, than, probably wider than a normal frame. For that size of boat, for that width of boat. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So he probably, even though it's probably a 13 6, he probably needs maybe even 10 foot oars. I'm guessing these are nines or nines and a halfs. He may even need tens because those locks are so wide. One of my guides on his private boat brought it by the house and we talked about oar length and the length between his oar lock, because he custom designed everything the way he wanted it and built it. Well, his, his, his oar locks were really wide and his oar locks on his 14 foot boat are wider than the oar locks on our 18 foot boats. Whoa. So he technically needs 11 foot oars on his on his 14 foot boat because he made his locks so wide to make all of his other custom stuff work out i mean so I, I i'm gonna say this i feel like in general having them closer in is nice you know having your locks closer in because then you can have a shorter oar and it still works and then it's like you're it's particularly in technical rivers you don't have to ship them quite as much with that much ore out on each side you're just having to ship way more often you can't use them nearly as much in the technical stuff that's hard yeah for the flat water it's nice having probably those longer oars to row but for the rapids and where you're concerned it seems like much more challenging what happens is you sit high the higher than you need to so then you get oar towers that are higher than they need to be extra high but then they splay out farther and that makes the distance between the oar locks longer so you need longer oars see so how he's sitting on a seat right if he removed that seat and just sat a little bit lower he can have a lot lower oar locks and have correct length, like have you know shorter oars for that boat. Well, he can't adjust the oar lock height on that setup, though, can he? He can't, but I'm guessing. I'm guessing this is custom. He it looks custom like a custom. Yeah. He's like, hey, I'm, I want to sit on the seat on this thing. He chose to make them taller. You know, I, I think the NRS eight inch towers, whatever that height is, is pretty ideal. We see a lot of the. I think it's a ten or the, whatever twelve inch towers, and every time you see those towers. It's, Oars are way too short, but it's pretty minor. Like he has his interior. Like a lot of people are too wide on the interior. He's good. It's just like right now the oars are a little steep going into the river, and it's a hard angle to row. Yeah, right? but I he's, think he's 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 digging a little deeper. Well, is it just his blade in the water, or is there more than just the blade in right now? On that left it looks like it's at his blade. It but actually I see is. This, yeah, take it back. We yeah. see this a lot. Like some of these yeah. strokes to get mm -hmm. the to get the blade in, you need a big angle, so your arms are a bit high, and that yeah. that the the angle the oar goes down is pretty steep and it's just harder to row that way. So if you can get it so that your your oar isn't so steep, it, it, it works a little bit better. But this is a minor this is a minor, minor adjustment. Now I've already watched this. He does a really good job here. He's just like taking his time, dumping speed, pulling over. Nice line, yeah. Very calm. Does the right ship. The correct type of ship uses the rock to spin, comes through, and does the ship. Now, right here in Blossom, we go back a second. That was nice. I like this line. Yeah. So right here in a, in a typically like a bigger raft, a heavier raft, you have to be pulling back and dumping momentum because the river is taking you to this rock downstream. But he doesn't need to because the boat's a little lighter. That rock on the right down there, usually you slam into in a gear boat. The, wait, wait, the one right down here, the one, the, one, the one that he's slamming on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah so the bigger actually, gear boat, you have so much momentum, it takes you into that rock. So you have to be dumping momentum as soon as you go around that corner. Yeah. See, like right now, you can see his orange are pretty steep. So he's having a hard time getting full purchase. And when he's when he's pulling, his hands are pretty high, like right there, that left or how tall it is. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. So he has the interior length right, but 
he doesn't have to reach the water, so he's having at times having to do some weird high high rowing. Are you a fan of the cobras? The cobra locks? I don't really care. Our, my guides don't like them. I bought a bunch of them because they're cool. They cost more, so they must be cool. I bought them to stoke at our guides, and our guides don't like them. Uh, I can't remember why. I don't remember why they're good. There's a reason people say they're good. Yeah, I've heard that too, and I, I've, I've had problems with them pinching. Like I don't. I'm not. I'm not sure. I've heard. I've heard that too, and I'm trying to remember why people like the cobras more. But I haven't. I've never been like, oh yeah, the cobras are way better. Uh, Orlocks are so interesting because basically you're. You know, I'm, you know, I was thinking of my last. I wrote, I wrote four locks on my last trip, and I was thinking a bit about um, about orlocks, and it's such simple technology. Like you have an oar, just like, hey, let me rest it on a pin and just wrap a thing around it, right? It's like the simplest solution to the problem. Which I, a lot of times, the simplest solution is the best solution. Mm -hmm. But you would think somebody can innovate on orlocks. You mean so like pins and like pins and things. clips? Or or rights. That's a whole different te technology. No, no, I guess all rights. But it, there's something like going from just simple, like I have some right here, going from just simple brass or You know, it's just it's just so simple. Like there's so I think with the Cobra, they were like, we can make these better. Let's try some things. And nobody's really think, made some better than just a simple brass or lock. It's the most basic thing, which is good. So we got some more. We got some more comments here. Okay. Oh wow. We're gotta catch up. Okay. Um, also good. We got a bunch of helmets. Mine's a rope push. Oh, that's interesting. There's probably a bunch of grommets. You can just pull through the grommets. Oh, uh, that's kind of sick. That sounds really nice. Hopefully, you tie your knot correctly. What's a, a Williamson? Oh, oh, you say the tarp oh. over the. What's a Williamson? It's that fourteen six. Uh, wing boat I, I designed. Why is it called the Williamson? Because I named it something cool. Like I was trying to, I was trying to name them all after like Roman things. Like one of them was the Praetorian. The 16 foot was the Praetorian, and the 14 foot was something else really badass. And then they decided to rename all the boats after former wing employees, which is super cool. Like super cool. So there's the Surge, the Williamson, and the Nichols, and. Yeah, so all the boats are the models are named after the employees. So that's the fourteen six. It's the boat I designed based after the adventurer, but made some. But in my, what I had in mind was like a boat that can run Cherry Creek, or you can run row the Grand Canyon. So it's like the boat that can kind of do it all. Um. Anyway, um, tarp so, style. Yeah. yeah, so the tarp style is just the one that goes over the top and holds yeah. things down. So you're saying it works well on its Williamson. That's what I worry about ice. because it has so much. It doesn't work. Yeah, so the Williamson has tons of D-rings. All those wing boats I designed are just flush with D-rings. So yeah, easy. it's annoying. Um, side boat. It's really side annoying. It's, re it's really annoying for paddle boating. Don't get me started on all those extra D-rings all over the place. People get upset. They don't well, like the D-rings. Hey, Adam, I got a question for you. Did you try running a perimeter line through those back D-rings on the high side, then going to that perimeter line between each of the D-rings to tie down better? Have you tried that? And maybe that didn't work that well. I don't know. Um, yeah, but anyways, that's, yeah, here we go. There's plenty of D-rings, but yeah, the, the high sides, we've been teaching a lot of people with high sides. They have a severe lack of D-rings. It's pretty bad. You know, it's, there's barely any D-rings on these high sides. They need to add I a think high side. High side is really a paddle is, is designed for a paddle boat. So they don't have a lot of D-rings on because the paddle. Not their 16s. Yeah, I mean, oh, the 16. Yeah, I true. guess. Okay. Yeah, you're right. You're right. 16. You're right. The 16s. Yeah, that's eight, a different story. You're right. But 16, also, 18. like we, they they have like a. I have a student who has like a, twelve and a half. But there's some sweet. It, it's really fun to row. It's a twelve and a half high side, but the oar frame is amazing. But there's hardly any D-rings to do anything with, so it's really hard to tie a frame on, and more and more people are rowing these tiny boats, so it's almost like they should have. You know, I'm sure they have options to add D-rings, but. There's not it's, when you buy these boats stock. There's hardly any hardly any doings because of all these paddle okay. boaters that worry about their knuckles. I I just guided a boat with a D ring. Next, I paddle guided a bunch this last trip with a D ring right there. I just knew it was there and I avoided it. I don't I don't get it. No. No. I agree, that. Zach. I manage better than people. Okay, Nick. Why why the cobras? Why are the cobras better? What's, yeah. 
why are they so because they look cool they're called cobras i mean like they i just, mean that's the, names, the name is way better i will say they, that the name is way better cobras I aaron hit the, aaron hit the nail on the head you like them because they look cool and they're called cobras they look like cobras don't don't tell us you roll cobras and you roll regular ones and you can actually compare them you always i'm guessing you've always had cobras and they sound cool i'm no. not hating i'm with you I bet I bet Nick's wrote both. He's got reasons why. I think. I want to hear him. Yeah. All right. And then it looks like Adam. Yeah. You can't get the you get the perimeter rope tight enough. Yeah. Mm. Push my handles all the way to the front. Oh so yeah, I heard that's that is the that is the thing about the cobra. Push the cobra, it down the, like the that. The range of motion. They don't when you push them down lower, they don't catch as much. They don't. They don't catch on the ends as much. They don't pinch. Is this so like, you can go by rocks and put like Nick? Is this so you can like push them down to have like grab something, or is it to push them down to go by rocks? Well, also the other way too to stand up and row, you can bring them up at a higher angle oh, and higher. they still work. Yeah, I think that. Thanks, thanks, Nick. Yeah, the, the the range of motion on them I think is better, and they don't pinch as much on yeah. the edges. And if you have the regular ones, you got to open them up more so that it doesn't really hold the oar in as well. Yeah, and look, thanks, Nick. Nick's like, Nick, we see Nick's capo in his photo. Is Nick? Do you Nick? Do you use them on your capo too? Because you're probably. I mean, yeah, I don't have any here. I have a bunch of them that we don't use because the guys don't like them. <laughs> you spent all this money. There on was a reason. Here. It's sort of like when I bought. I buy. I bought about some square tops, and our guys didn't. Some of them like the eleven foot square tops, but not many. Oh, there what's an what's an eleven foot square top? What are you talking about? Do you, know, do you know what a square top is? I have no idea what we're talking about here. Aaron, you do not know what a square top is. No. What's a square top? <sighs> Can somebody just explain it to me? Like, tell me in the comments so I don't have to. This is exhausting. It's exhausting. No, I, I, I think on everyone else is like, none of us know what a square top is. And everybody here knows what a square top is. Okay. They, all, but they do yes, look cool. I, I think they look cool. I, 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 I should probably use them more. Square top. I, I just searched square top. Nothing comes up, Zach. They have women's square clothing. It's women's clothing. It's where their their tops have like a square. Their tops go like they're cut low and go square up. That's what it, that's the square top is. Okay, it's Aaron. A, I'll it's explain a woman's to you. shirt. You like to wear those types of shirts. Okay. No. Okay. So <laughs> a square top is one of Sawyer's best oars, according to people who like oars. And it's unique because it's a wood or uh -huh. with carbon around most of it and a dime light blade. And the end of it, you know how the, the part that goes from like the, the little donut thing? Okay. I was wondering it, if this is what you're they, talking about. It's square. They make yeah, it square. That. And What's, so the what, idea, why, why is that better? Because it's got more weight on it? There's two, there's three, I think there's three reasons people like the squares. Two, two, like two I can think of. One, is it's a little bit of counterbalancing so they say people say they're perfectly balanced you know this the the, the extra wood there they're perfectly balanced could you just have a round one that's bigger diameter too and it would do the same thing okay that goes to part two part two is that it's it's like people know you have square tops it's a oh, brand it's like new the, it's a, so if you've got the cobra locks you want the square top oars to go with your cobra locks is what i'm hearing yeah i mean square top oars are sort of like cobras right yeah, Noel, come on. Noel and Aaron, you guys have been out of the loop for way too long. Zach, how, many square, have been, how, many, how many square top wars do you guys run on your trips? I bought nine 11-footers like 10 years ago, and we have three left. I Basically, this when square tops are hot, I, I went to Sawyer. Um, I had these really cool orders that were amazing for Northwest Rafting Company called these, these Blunt Family orders. They were perfect, these 11-footers. And I couldn't get them anymore. And the Echo Guides, because was running Northwest and Echo side by side. And the Echo Guides were feeling like I was ignoring them by the, having just regular wood oars. So I, I went to Sawyer and said, what are the sexiest, best oars you can sell me? And they said, so, square tops. So I love them. And so I bought nine square tops, and we're down to three at this point. But and no one uses them now, is what I'm hearing. We have one set. Yeah, I mean, they because they're like, they bend a little bit. You know what, I think you about the foot oars. You don't want bendy oars. You want oars that when you put them in the water, they they move the boat. You know, we're not fishing, and I don't know. We don't. You know, we, these are little twenty five year olds with strong shoulders, so they can handle stiff oars. So they they sometimes go out, but not very often. 
and they, they're more i think they're more likely to break so the idea though is that the carbon reinforces the wood so it's wood over it's carbon over wood right and so if you ding it and break the carbon it's still strong because there's the wood core but, but the square top acid. is wood the wood part's the square that's not the carbon that's square it's the wood the that's whole square. there's a little bit of carbon over the square the whole thing is wood and there's carbon over most of it and the square part that's wood is showing but the rest of it is has carbon over it but the, the rest of that's carbon over it is actually round yeah yeah it's square top well, i mean they, so thing. they could just make the whole thing round and have carbon over it and it would have the same performance yeah it just wouldn't look as cool i think it, okay. yeah i mean we've done a bunch i've done a show zach you know i'm a big fan there's zach's there's a guy named zach i swear to like the owner zach um is it is a friend of mine and we've done a gear garage video on square tops versus mxgs and i have strongly believed the mxg is superior for whitewater i think square tops look cooler but for whitewater the mxgs i think are just superior they're stiffer they're and they're light. and i'm guessing the mxg is way less expensive and if you break part same of price. it you can just replace the blade that's it. if you break part of it you can replace the blade or the shaft things are yeah. interchangeable but they're just stiffer they're more you know i can throw on my truck and not worry about them the square tops i feel like i kind of have to baby a little bit i like the mxg i don't like the handles on the mxgs i don't like the rounded handle i like just a straight handle i'm not a fan of the rounded no handle. idea we're talking about the hand the handles on the mxgs are like they're they're like they're like they're wider in the middle and then they're they're smaller they go like this they go like or like that you know so you're Aaron, that's the not middle. the mxgs that's just a you can replace handles in orbs that's just the handles they that's use the handles they come with and so like that's the handles i'm not the one who, no not the all wood ones all wood ones are straight okay. across okay that's the handles all yeah the non-wood ones are different yeah i just i haven't rode with an all wood or in so long now because we have all mxgs i forgot but you're right the old handles are a little different. and, I, and keep, the mxg i like the flex a little better on the wood like i've rode both a lot and i rode both down you know grand canyon trip so you're running for multiple for like week-long trip and what i like about the mxgs is they're always straight so it's easier on my forearms yeah because the wood ones like to bend over time and they, they start to a little, work off, a little bit and you're having yeah but i feel like the mxgs are harder on my joints because it's like it it goes straight into my joints there's no there's no cushion and with the wood there's a little cushion flex. there's a little bit of flex not a lot i don't want a lot of flex but there's a little bit and it gives it a little bit of cushion and it's not so abrupt on my body so yeah. ideally you'd have both yeah, and I mean, maybe that's what the wood tops are i mean the square tops no it's the same to look i think it's the same as the mxg handle all the sawyers are going to that handle i mean well, i'm not talking about the handle i'm not talking about the handle now i'm talking about the flex of the oh. ore sorry i've moved back to the flex of the ore it's not oh. the handle that causes those problems i like the all wood ore for the flex in the ore that causes less pain in my joints but i like how the mxgs are straight all the way down the shaft so they don't yeah. dive and do that stuff and cause my forearm issues so yeah. i like the mxgs so I'm gonna, personally because they're yeah. lighter and so it's less wear and tear in your body. Like a lot of the guides, you know, just having lighter ores are easier. They're stiff. And if you break it, you broke half. You didn't break the whole thing. And so no. even and if you break multiple ores, like a low water middle fork, you're breaking ores like crazy. Well, you can break a, a shaft and a blade and a shaft and a blade, and you can put things together. And so you have yeah. extra spares because you have extra half half a spare when you're done. I think Not the wood ores hold ores. up I think that wood ores hold up better though. The MXGs like they the UV they see they seem to wear out. No and the, the flex the flex 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 you flex. and the UV no, no. no and also the, the flex point the flex point on the lock I feel like I see them just like break there. Um versus the wood ores sometimes you have to be careful where they'll get like they'll get a crack in there and they'll get water in them and then they'll get water rot and then they'll yeah. snap. But there's otherwise, maintenance with the wood ores but there's maintenance with the wood ores. That's true. But over, I mean, I've run a lot of wood ores and a lot of MXGs commercially, and I'd say they break equivalently. Like number of ores per year we go through, whether it was wood or now MXGs is pretty. It actually maybe is a little bit less, but I would I would attribute that to having better guides now than we used to. Like having I'm gonna, I'm, and, I'm and, gonna then, and then being lighter, they're much easier to quickly sh ship and move. The wood ores, there's a little more of a delay, and so sometimes they get stuck on rock or something. I don't know if I feel bad about them. I don't notice that much of a difference. The other thing I'm going to say is with the wood ores, if you go wood ore with pins and clips, Zach, 
I think that's the best because it's a little, it's it's got that nice flex to it. You don't have to worry about it diving because it's it's pins and clips, and you can just push on it and pull on it, and you can really drive a lot of power into them. So I, I, hey, I Aaron, yeah. I'm a, you know me, like I love my big heavy clavy oars. I I still have them. I I kept. I love those big clavies you ran on the T forever, and I'll run it. I run them tomorrow, hands down. You know what we but, did is those clavies is we we would shave down the throat a little bit, make them a little lighter through the throat. And they still don't break, but just take out some of the some of the weight so they they are a lot quicker. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'd love low water twallamies with these big heavy oars that could you could bash into rocks and do what you needed to. I mean, the but, whole wrap. I've seen a whole raft wrap around an oar. The oar get caught. It doesn't break. It goes up. <laughs> the whole raft goes up and wrapped around the oar. Though it's just sitting there in the middle of the river, one of those clavies. Yeah, those yeah. things are really strong. Zach, don't even extra edge to hit your head. He's talking about the squ the square top. It's got it's oh, got sharp corners. Yeah. yeah, it's much more dangerous. Good point, yeah. Zach. Yeah. I want to go back to this one. Most drift good book guys use them. I think they I did start off as a drift boat oar, and then people thought they were sexy. They started bringing them on their whitewater boats, um, which I guess is cool. But now the drift boater oars are using the the drift boaters. The really cool ones are using the V lands. And what are those? Uh, it's another Sawyer. I think they're using it. Sawyer has some new super light oars that your putters are using. So I think the the V lambs are just like I don't understand how they work. They're just better flex or something. Mm -hmm. But uh, we saw Hellfrich on the water last week with their drip boats, and they all had V lambs. So I think there's newer newer stuff. No, it's come a long ways. What or showing less? Yeah, I mean our twenties were just like give us the heaviest, burliest thing, and now we're. We're talking about joint surgery. Well, yeah, I mean, it, I'm telling you, it's hard. It's Sawyer, harder on you. It's get older. Zach, the Sawyer V lambs are also square top. Okay, yeah. There's so that's the blade. They, that's I the blade them up. That's what they I think do. You can get the, I think the V lamb is a blade actually that you can get with different. Right, you can uh, you can get. Uh, right, hmm. so I think, like you normally, um, normally you get the. Um, you get the uh, uh, square top has a dynamite blade on it, but I think you can get yeah because there's like a regular. I just googled it too. There's a regular V lamp or yeah. This is let me let me switch over to this. And, um, share. Sorry. Let's stop. Actually, there's. This is what I just, you know, I just quickly saw how the other day, and I noticed I was noticed they're all, all their drip boats are wood now. That wasn't always the case. They look good, and can you see this, and oh, they're wow. running this oar, and so they're really sexy oars. Like the the shaft, I believe, is wood, and then it has this really cool weave over the top that you can see through, but has these like cr crusty crossy things. Let's see if I can zoom in to see it. It's a cool looking oar. It's a beautiful oar. Yeah, so all the, this is what I'm seeing the drip boaters use now, these v lands And the blades, I think the blades have this really cool flex to them. Yeah. What Do you see the other blade they have on those? It looks like a kayak blade on them, kayak paddle blade. If you go to, if you just go to blades, you can pull it up on, if you go to, if you go up to, uh, um, v lands or blades. What? Let's see what talking about. So v lambs. Yeah, so there's a V lamb square top. Yeah, go to the ore blades, the V lamb ore blade. So that's there's a square top with V lambs. Yeah. I don't know where he's talking about. Aaron. Go up top again where you were just going, you're looking at everything so with there. the ores. So go over to ore blades on the far right and go oh, to V lamb it. blade. And then if you scroll down, you'll see the kayak one. You'll see down at the bottom. Oh, see the oh that's a new, what that's a, that's a skull that cut. That's a skull cut. So it, the idea is when it's, I, I can't explain this. I'm going to, there's somebody that's better than me, but when you put it in the water, yeah, it's like a kayak paddle. You know, a kayak paddle kind of has like the shape so that it's evenly underwater. So um, I'm explaining this terribly. I don't really know, but people, there's people that love the skull cut. I know rafters are using the skull cut too. So it just looks a little bit different. The skull cut, huh? It sounds cool. It goes with the cobras. Man, these yeah, names, I mean, you gotta name you gotta rename it. I right? mean, this is if you want to be super, super sexy, you get the cobras, you get some square tops with some V lamb skull cuts. You got it all. 
on your Williamson boat. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> that the name. Williamson. <laughs> the on Williamson's the Williamson. a sweet boat. It's a, man. It's a sweet right. boat. The name is not going with the, the with the current vernacular for rafting. No. Yeah. No. no. I'm not. Yeah. It's a, it's a it's a noble thing though that to name it after. Oh, totally. No, it's place. it's a great name. I, I, it's a great boat too. I'm not maybe not the best it. marketing thing because it's I, but um, the or description even says yeah he's gonna join us. There you go. There you go. Much of miles in one day too. I really like the square tops. I just did back to back forty four mile day forty four mile days. Adam, where did you do back to back forty four mile days? That's crazy. Yeah, that's hmm. a lot. Of, that's a yeah. lot. Shortcut. Oops. Uh, oh, that, okay, that's right. I forgot why. That makes sense. It's kind of like the kayak battle for going. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Thanks, Todd. I don't think so. I think that's a. Um, I think that's a rumor. What's the word for that? Rumor. Yes. I don't believe it all. Next time you Show looks cool. I might have to see if I can demo up here. there. Yeah, go. they it's you know it's unique. It depends what you're doing. I'll tell you the other thing um, that they have that I talked to Zach about is um, they have some cool stuff going on. <laughs> but I mean, let's just let's just pause here for a second and talk. Like, why wouldn't you want the blade on your oar? Like, would you say the blades on kayak paddles are more refined than the blades on oar paddles? Like there's been more more like precision done with kayak paddle blades, and it seems like a blade that's shaped like a kayak paddle blade would make sense for oars as well, and there would be an advantage. Yeah, I to mean, that. sure. I, the, the disadvantage I think is your blades aren't ambidextrous. Like you have to be conscious mm -hmm, of which way your mm -hmm, blades are facing mm -hmm, up and down, mm -hmm. and sometimes they're not. So it's just one more thing to think about and do about. If you're running pins it and says, clips, though, it doesn't matter, Zach. Yeah, but if you're in the pins and clips, you're using stout wood oars like a badass. You're not like, you know, you're just, you don't have to worry about all this stuff. So this one, this is the Smoker Bandit Carbon. And so these are super light oars. They're not recommended for white water. Or if they are like super light boats. These are just like, they're like, all, it's surprising, they're like feather light. And it says, Smoker Bandit blades are handcrafted with the toughest materials known to white, for, to white water. So, I mean, it, to... It's not meant for hard white water, like because they they're more likely to break. But also yeah. says for the longest life and best performance, package these beauties with legendary Cobra oar locks. Cobras provide the highest range of motion while protecting the shaft in extreme conditions. So kind of cool. There you go. And so they have they have this the red and they have like these red shafts too. Check out the shafts. I guess they're black. They have a lot, a lot of branding on them. Lots of branding. Um, the bandits. Whoa, Adam! Middle four through four. Yeah, there you go. That'll, that'll be forty four to four mile days. Um, yeah, it's low out there. The forty four. I just did a twenty four mile day in the middle fork, and that was exhausting. Uh, if you run these, if you open locks, you might be able to get some real finesse moves. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, yeah that's pretty great. interesting. I mean, we'll have to see that, see that in action. So, and, uh, so maybe we go back and look at. Can we go back and look at that? We didn't really. I feel like we barely even talked about the run on um, Gilman awesome. grips. Yeah, another comment. Yeah, the Gilmans. He's got it. The Gilman grips. That needs another name too. The like. What is it? All right, the, Mark Rivers, comma PT, comma DPT, comma badass. Are you using Gilman grips? Or are you just like throwing this out there? I mean, that's the whole thing. The Gilman grips on the shoal cut bandits with the Cobras. That's, that's you're buying every gimmick in the book. But Mark, are you using the Gilman grips? I, I, I haven't used them yet and I wanna get some real feedback from people I trust. I'd love to hear what you think. All right, Aaron, what do you wanna look at? No, Let's go back to that. We, we we barely even. I feel like we looked at that video real quick. That sh video footage of the uh, of the rogue. I wouldn't go back to that again. All right. What are kung fu grips? Are, is that really? Is that is that a, a kai? Adam, is that, <laughs> Adam, are you making this up? Are there kung fu grips now too? But going back, look at that footage again. 
because I, you know, we, we really want to watch them. Did we just watch him run it once, really, or maybe a couple times? Oh, yeah, but yeah. I wanted to point out a couple of things. I really like that rock pivot he did halfway down. I want I want to, before we, let's finish off his whole run because he does a signal here, and I want to. What's this signal? Is this like thumbs up to somebody? Thumbs up. Oh, that, no, thumbs that up. was this. I think. I don't think that was thumbs up. I think that was a shrink cat. A shrink or something. A what? Is it a shrink? Do you know what a shrink is? Aaron, you gotta leave. You gotta get out of. What's a shrink? You don't. I'm not even gonna explain it. Come on. Zach, if you just said the square top more, I would have known what you were talking about. You just called it a square top. You're like, oh, the square top. Everybody, like square top. everybody knows what a square top is. If I say square top, everybody here except Noel knows that's a square top or There's not one. I guarantee there's no other person watching this who doesn't know that. You guys are, are just disconnected. No offense to Noel. Yeah. Noel's doing a triple this here pretty soon, I think. Noel, aren't you doing a triple this in like a week or something? Nice. Okay, so. Yeah, the rock pivot's nice. He gets that rock pivot. Which requires the ship. I want to point at the ship. I love the ship. And I like this where you hit the rock here and it kind of slowed him down. And then... And I think the key thing here that is massive that I'm very, very, very stoked on is there's that rock I told you about this downstream that usually you have to pull here at dumb momentum, but he doesn't have to. A lot of people try pushing past this rock. Like right now, he looks he turns into it, points at it, and pulls away. And this is the big thing. We you know, Aaron, we used to teach pull away from danger, right? Oh yeah. So the thing is a better way to think about it is don't pull away. The danger is the rock. If he pulled away from the, if he pointed the rock and pulled away, he'd be pulling upstream quite a bit. Mm -hmm, He's mm -hmm, pulling, mm -hmm. The new way I'm teaching it is pull away from the line to danger. So if there's a line going uh, straight into danger, yeah, yeah. I like that. point your boat yeah. at that line. See that? And now he's pointing away from the line to danger perfectly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that a lot. Zach, what, can you just go far right here? Just go right of those rocks as you come out of that. Yeah, shoot? I took it. I took a gear book down far right. Well, a few weeks ago. What's the disadvantage? Not a gear book. Sorry, I took. I took. A, I took a like a third, like 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 thirteen, down the right side. That looks but nobody believed me. It was pretty easy. Yeah, nobody believed yeah. me. They're like, "What? You're gonna do the right? You're crazy." I'm like, "Ah, I mean." I mean, it looks like most of the water is going to right of those rocks. You've got a heavy eighteen foot boat, and that's coming out of that chute. It seems almost easier just to continue to go across. I, I don't. I think a heavy eighteen to be hard. I had like a. It was a rowing school, so I had like a medium weight thirteen or fourteen. And we went right through. <laughs> he's also doing a good job keeping his head on the swivel. He's looking downstream and upstream. You know, sad. Like he's he's looking around, paying attention. He's not just looking at his line, which is nice to see. Yeah, looking downstream. <laughs> <coughs> He's gonna do a shrig here. It's not a shrig though. He did like a, whatever that sign is. Go center? Is he just saying go center? No, he did what's the, this. What's the shrig? Like, like, he was he was stoked. That wasn't a shrig. That was just like you've seen this before. We were like, yeah, like this is like, like you're at ACD. ACD yeah, yeah. This is back in the day like, when you were like getting yeah, rocking out. Yeah, yeah. This guns and this, roses. Hold on, hold on. I gotta stop. Whatever's going on here is my thing. So, so Aaron, a shrig is this. Hold on, I, I was looking it up. Really I, I, thing. I missed it. You got you to show me again. If somebody does this signal to you, says shrig, that means you had a good line. Or if you like. Yeah. Uh -oh, this is shrig. Freezing. What's, where'd that come from? What? Shrig? This? I think it came from uh, like Dave Facilli, like some white salmon kayakers. This? What is it? what? This? It's shrimp. This is a shrimp. You know how kayakers shrimp. have you know what brown Aaron, do you know what, Aaron, do you know what brown claw is? No. 
Okay, you uh, you and Nolan need what's to. That, to what's that? What's a brown claw? I got, I got, is it just you get thumbs up? Like yeah, sweet line, thumbs up, buddy. No, this is brown claw. Go, ah. So if you like kayak some big drop, you do a brown claw at the end. I'm not gonna explain it. It's a long story. And then for a while, the cool thing kayakers did was they go like this would be the symbol for church, like church, right? So if you're kayaking and you see somebody else like, or if you see a car and you're kayaks on top, you just give them a chur out the window for church. And then what is, now what does church have to do with, what does church have to do with kayaking? Because kay going kayaking is being at your church. Okay. Or and you then can just I, give the shaka. Yeah, you could do that. That's like very nineteen seventy nine. And then you could also the then then some kayakers, I don't know who, invented shrig. And then some people invented shrig cap, which are these yellow balls they put on people's antennas. They're shrig cap balls. And it's a it's a it's a kayaker it's a kayak it's a it's a antenna ball that's yellow with a cat and a kayak and that's a shriek cat balls really wow i think i really really oh. yeah I'm, I, I'm excited to try my someday mark pretty cool 15th yeah noel's coming on one of our trips on the 15th wow i'm gonna, no, I'm gonna try to meet you put it not to be back in idaho on 19th but i'm gonna try to go go see you guys in the launch um character sign like we just yeah i mean we could go in depth agree it, agree that should probably we should probably leave that to one of his gear garage shows and keep that out of here well we yeah. need a guest because i know most of it but i'm going to say something stupid you know it's kind of right? good though it's like you're 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 helping us rafters be able to talk to kayakers better and communicate <laughs> with them but we'll understand no. and we won't get all like Dude, what'd you just do? Why are you dropping me that side? I would have been all mad at a character. He comes up and did that to me. I'd be like, what the hell, man? I would have gone all mad. I thought he'd be like flipping me off or something like yeah. that. I think most people know these things, except for you and Noel. Second half Yeah, we can I mean we can get a kayaker on who knows this stuff. Uh one of my one of my guides who's into it. Um, oh, that would be great. Maybe talk yeah. about it. Or but the, but this is this is why like hammer factor, like podcast exists. Like it's a great podcast We're talking about kayaking. Well, sweet. Oh. Yeah, I'd love to see you too, Noel. I'm gonna try to make it down there. If I don't, I apologize. But I would love to see you guys. Um, yeah, you'll have, you'll have a great time. But our guides down there are so awesome. You'll love it. So, well, the UPS guys here. So we should probably shut this one down, Aaron. Sounds good. Um, well, I want to thank you guys all for tuning in for another of Aaron and Zach's. I'm going to this original mediocre video review Thank show. You. I like their original name. Yeah, maybe you can hit Zach. Zach, you can hit the mute button. There we go. Ah, thank you. So, hey, guys, I uh, want to thank you guys again for turning in. Uh, we do this weekly, 2 p.m. Pacific time. By the way, Zach, are we going to be here next week? Are you going to be around? Yeah. Oh, I got some killer footage for next week. Uh, when oh, I was yeah. on the middle Ooh. front last week, I, I – uh, I got a little beat down. I so had we get to see. Like, we had some footage of you getting beat down, of you not having yeah, a perfect we, line. You can see some footage of me messing up. All right, that's exciting. So great. So yeah, next week, two p.m. Friday, we'll be back. Um, you guys, hey, we really appreciate when you hit that like button, subscribing, and ringing the bell, so you get all those notifications, all those things. Thank you, and yeah, we appreciate. It. And we and you guys, thanks for all the comments. It's, it's fun doing this show with y'all here. So. Zach, great being on the show with you too, and uh, look forward to next week. Yeah, hold on, just two comments really quick. Um, oh. I don't know what those are, but cool. And I don't know, we're, we're, we're looking at Yeah, up. right? Up, yeah, if someone wants to, yeah, I want, I want to go out to the Koei in all my free time right now. Yeah, I love yeah. to go to the Koei. How late does that run? Can we run that in the fall? Well, let's talk about it next time. Uh, let's end this one. But thank you, everyone, for the comments. Yeah. Aaron, as always, it's fun to shoot the. Shoot the yeah um discussion with you <laughs> and let's shut this one down <laughs> <laughs>